Hey, we're back at the farm today. It's time to work on the Ghia. Okay, here's the deal. I've been working on this Carmen Ghia on and off for about three years. And when I say on and off, I mostly mean off. The truth is, if I'm not working on a video, I rarely make it out here to work on this thing. And if I do, it's for an hour at a time, maybe two, maybe three hours at a time. It's just really hard to get anything done. But the fact of the matter is, I'm never actually gonna get it done unless I start to get it done. If you've ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Well, you eat it one bite at a time, which means I have to come out here and take one bite at a time of this. And so today, I'm gonna try something I've never actually done out here. The current state of this project is that I've done the metal work on the top half of the car. There's still some on the bottom. I've got epoxy primer on it and I've started doing some body filler, but there's a ton of body filler left to do. So today, I'm gonna take a roughly eight hour day and just dedicate it to doing body filler and see how much progress I can actually make if I try. And I'm also gonna close this door because it's really cold. You might be saying to yourself, an eight hour day, Bob, that's a really long time. You could probably get a lot of it done. And that might be true. Or maybe it's like, you're not gonna get anything done. I don't know, because I'm really not very good at this. The truth is doing body filler has always been kind of a struggle for me. I'm not exactly sure how to do it correctly, even though I've watched a bunch of videos. I never know if I'm sanding too much or too little, if I've got it smooth enough. It's one of those things I'm just gonna have to keep doing until I get comfortable with it or get it finished. Now typically I'm a person who just jumps in and tries something and I learn better by failing and then learn what not to do and that's just, that's just me. But last night I actually sat down and watched a whole bunch of videos, got a bunch of tips and tricks to actually try to make this faster and correct. Problem is that it's very cold in here, and so this stuff is really thick. You're supposed to be able to kind of fold it into itself to mix it well, but it's very thick and chunky and not smooth like it should be, so I don't know. This is gonna be a long day. So one of the things I learned last night from watching videos is that one of the reasons the body filler doesn't go on smoothly or it's hard to get smooth is because of air bubbles in the body filler. And one of the reasons for that is because people will often just like real roughly mix the things together. And so instead you're supposed to fold it. You kind of never lift it and create air bubbles in it. You just fold it over itself and smooth it. And you try to push down really hard to get the air bubbles out of it. Well, that's really hard to do when it's super cold, I found out. It turns out that this stuff is just so thick that it won't like smooth really because of how cold it is. So I may have to end up waiting for it to warm up a little bit. I opened the door, it is warming up a little bit, but it's still, it's not going on very smoothly. One of the little tips that I picked up a while back was you can actually clean off the old body filler from these with some lacquer thinner. So I've just got a little plastic container here that I drop these in after I use them, pour in some lacquer thinner, and then in like, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes or whatever, you can take them out and just wipe them off and they're good to go. Then if you have a top that you can put on this, it'll actually you know keep it from evaporating and you can have a little bath that you can drop these in anytime you need to. This is my least favorite part of this entire endeavor, right here. Since it's cold out here, it's just taken a really long time. I actually haven't even started sanding anything yet and I'm two and a half hours into the day. I do have a lot of spots around the car covered with what's gonna be probably a first coat, but it's actually really frustrating to just not be able to get it to do what you want it to do. And it got me thinking about all the different skills that I get to try out and people do, it's all practice. So if you're working with wood, you start to learn how to move wood, how to get it to do the thing that you want. If you're working with metal, you start to learn how to get it to stick together with a welder or bend and change shape in certain ways based on practice. Well, this is something I've only done a couple of times in my life and I've never done very much of it in any particular place. Today, I've probably done more body filler than I have in my entire life before today. And so I guess it's just a practice thing. I guess it's one of those things that I just have to spend time doing. So luckily, by the time I finish this car, I'll probably be really good at it and never have to do it again. Although that's not entirely true because I have another Land Cruiser that's gonna need a lot of the same stuff. All right, I'm back from lunch, which means hopefully 
This body filler has had time to set up or cure or dry or whatever it does. And while I was eating, I decided to change my approach for the day just a little bit. I'm still gonna see how much I can get done in like an eight hour day. But my original plan was to try to get something finished. Try to get some section on the car completely done. And I think maybe that's the wrong approach at this point because of my skill level. So I think instead, I'm actually gonna try to get as many things started as possible. I'm gonna try to get all the way around the car and make sure that everywhere that needs some sort of body filler eventually has at least one coat. It's not gonna have all the filler that it needs. It's not gonna be completely sanded. That's fine. I wanna at least start them all. Speaking of sanding, I watched a bunch of those videos last night and I made a nice little list of all of the different grits and when you should switch from one grit to the other and what the process is for getting this stuff sanded. And then I left that piece of paper at home. So I'm gonna have to go off of memory today, but I do know that the first step is to take an orbital sander with 80 grit, knock off all the high spots, just the high spots, and scratch it up enough that you can start to work up in grit and down in body filler until you start hitting bare metal. So we're just gonna go for it. <laughs> One of the things I love about this car, but also am now hating about this car, is how curvy it is. I mean, honestly, it's one of the reasons I like the way it looks, but man, it makes it really difficult to put on body filler. All right, so I've got a bunch of other coats on. It's honestly kind of hard to tell if I'm making any progress because it looks basically the same. Nothing is finished and nothing is really smooth. It's just not as bumpy. I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, one of the problems that I'm running into is this little spot right here. It's this compound curve that actually changes throughout the curve, like the compoundness of the two parts of the curve change as it goes up. Having a really hard time getting stuff down into the bottom of this without it filling up and changing the curve. So I think I'm gonna take one of these and actually try to cut it off because it's really thin, easy to cut plastic. See if I can get something that pretty closely matches the curve somewhere along and then try to use that to spread it more evenly. I don't know. I'm sure there's specific tools for this, but this is all I've got. That was awesome. That worked like perfectly from here to here. Down here, the angle changes a lot, but I actually don't need to do work down there, so it's not a big deal. I can just sand that out. That's pretty great. While I was waiting on some of this to dry, I asked Instagram for some questions, and I immediately got a whole bunch of responses that were exactly the same. Why is the Ghia taking so long? And I guess I've never actually explained why it's taking as long as it is. Quick story. Okay, so my normal daily driver, my favorite vehicle ever is my white Land Cruiser. It's a 1992 FJ80, it's my favorite. And 514 days ago, I think it is, the engine died. Well, I had a new used engine to put back in it about three days later. I took it to the shop. The guy said that it would be rebuilt and installed in about six to eight weeks, maybe a little bit longer. But like I said, it's been 500 and something days. We're like at a year and a half. And as of today, it has an engine. It runs, but it doesn't run quite right. So he's still working on it. I still don't have it. I still don't know when I'm gonna have it. But how does that pertain to the Ghia? Well, I have a family. I have four kids who are very active. They're into sports and activities and music and practices and just stuff all the time. And basically our family's been down to one car for the last year and a half. So me taking that one car to come out here to work on this while the car just sits has not been realistic. And therefore working on this thing has just been a low priority because it's been difficult to get out here. And then you're probably like, Bob, what about that Land Cruiser right there that you drove here today? Yeah, it, it drives now, but for the last like two years, it's been really hit or miss. 
Sometimes it would turn on if the lights were off, or sometimes you couldn't turn the lights on when the truck was running. There's been all sorts of problems. It's finally kind of stable, but it's really rattly. So anyway, I don't know if you see the pattern there, but I have multiple vehicles that I really like that are in different states of working, not workingness. But I really enjoy working on them. I, I really don't know what I'm doing on any of this stuff, but it's fun to figure it out. It's like a whole new frontier of stuff for me to learn. In fact, I like it so much that I've actually been throwing around the idea of maybe starting an automotive channel separate from this main channel. If that would be interesting to you, putting all of the different car exploration, non-professional stuff on another channel, let me know, because I'm really thinking about it. All right, I got some more questions. Uh, a couple people were asking what color this thing's gonna be. Honestly, I haven't decided. Originally, I kind of wanted it to be like a dark silver, like a, I don't know what you call that, dark, dark silver, like graphite or something. I think that would be really cool because it would then look even more like James Bond's car, which was kind of like that, different ones, I don't whatever. Maybe that, but then I saw a really nice kind of, you know, Robin's Egg Blue the other day that was pretty awesome. So, I, I don't know, I'm not there yet. All right, it is 4.30, so just about a full day. I'm not done yet, but honestly, it doesn't feel like it's changed at all, which is really disappointing. I mean, I know I've gotten things done, but I don't know. Another 30 minutes, an hour, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right, somebody asked if I could go back and tell past Bob one thing that I've learned and why. Oh man, um, you need to schedule time to work on the car, otherwise it probably won't happen and it will take way longer than you imagine. Pass Bob. People always ask about uh, whether I'm gonna turn it electric. Here's the deal with making an electric conversion on a car like this. I looked it up because it would be really awesome. It would be way faster, be better for the environment. But the fact of the matter is like the cost of the kit to convert this is about $7,000, $8,000 or something like that without batteries. And then the batteries to get 150 miles of range, that's another 10 or $12,000. I did not pay very much for this car, definitely not that much. And so adding that additional money to make this thing electric, honestly, it just doesn't really make sense right now. Now, if you run a company that does electric conversions and you wanna sponsor that project, you let me know. Nick was asking what my favorite Pop-Tart flavor is, and that has nothing to do with the Ghia, but it's definitely, Frosted raspberry. Couple more questions. Somebody asked, what's the most fun I've had while working on this car? What surprised me? Honestly, it was building the rotisserie and flipping the body to this thing upside down. That blew my mind that that actually worked. And I'm really proud of that. It was a big undertaking. It was a lot of fun. It's a shame I don't get to use the rotisserie anymore though. All right, that's enough talking. <laughs> saying that I didn't feel like I was getting much done. It's about 5.30 and I just finished sanding this panel and it looks not great, still has a lot of work to do, but this easily looks 100 if not 200% better than it did earlier today. So I have a lot of work left to do, but that's one bite of the elephant. You might be saying to yourself, <laughs> Ah, come on. How do you get the top off? Yeah. <laughs>